be free. He doesn't want every human being in the country called Zoo to be an animal again. He want them to be a proper woman being and have the pleasure in introducing a very powerful man to you that want a good thing for humanity in the name of in the name of the bell is ringing Maxi Hinamdi Kano the leader of the high POB welcome to Heritage Television sir Thank you very, very much. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you for coming, sir. Today, on the platform with me, uh, that we're going to be speaking to my brother together, I have some few uh, gentlemen that are keen followers of Mazi Unambekano because we're a keen follower of him and we've been following him for a very long time we've been trailing him we've been admiring his hard work his good work we've been admiring for a long time and one of them is Olayomi Koiki of course you know Koiki Media in London who is another maybe take his his, his, his inspiration from Mazi Unambekano because the way Olayomi Koiki deal with him I can only say he, he actually take it from Unamdekano because he, he takes the emulate Unamdekano so much in this struggle. I have the pleasure of introducing Mr. Olayo Mikoiki of Kweki Media to every one of us. I'm sure you we all know him very well. Uh, that's Olayo Mikoiki there for you. Olayo Mikoiki, do you want to say hello to our big brother, our boss? on the same platform you know with a man that is well respected not just within you know the contraction that we call location nine as we call it a lot of uh, people uh, call it the zoo but i say a very good evening to you mazi inambekano and it is my pleasure having the same platform with you on a very uh, spiritual day i would say because uh, you know today we decided to have a fasting today you know as we're going into another journey of the history of that location on the first of october where we are having a peaceful rally and i'm happy to be having the same seat with you today a very good evening to you good evening my dear brother and thank you very much for having me i am humble i'm touched truly touched by your kind words thank you very much if you don't know this man you don't know this man this man if you are not close to him, you will know how humble he is. He's been very, very humble since I met him today. And I have the honor to say, I really love, love your humbleness. Fighting for Thank a struggle you. is a necessity. That is why you're doing it. Let's hear from him before the gentleman, the top gentleman, Timmy Tokwe, join us back. He's a very keen admirer of yourself. But let's hear from you personally, sir, before we continue. Over to you, Masi. Thank you very much for having me. Um, I think we are at the, at the first of, of history. History we made on the front of the year Going forward, I think our children and their children's children and indeed prosperity will remember this very period as being very pivotal in the liberation of our people. As anyone who has been following us knows very well, our journey is to try to set free the faith in that the garden and property the ecology for the public. What we are doing is not just for the freedom of our people, not just for the yeah. country alone, but for the good work and for our people of the Middle Belt. Even indeed the hand and the countries as well. We want everybody to be free. We want to go back to the way we were before the white man came. As I have very Religiously and religiously maintained over the years, a white man, and in this case Lugar, has no business coming to Africa to create contractions for the people that have actually inhabited that very continent for a very long time, even before Britain was formed. Therefore, I think it is an insult. I think it is something that is deplorable. I think that anyone who rises up to try to defend Nigeria, which I think is indefensible, is not only doing him or herself a disservice, you are setting up your people for comfort. 
the history of planning advancement to the ocean right now as we speak anybody who actually sat down to study Polani very well will understand the embodies of Randa. they have come to conquer they have come to pillage they have come to loot they have come to rape they have come to sack villages and communities they have come to ethnically cleanse people of their culture their traditions and their way of life as they have done to the Hausa people as they did to the Baggy people like the people and in fact to an extent they tried to do to the Yoruba people in the Lauren and it gives me a great deal of pleasure and delight that today people are now beginning to wake up. I will do the world bread and I've woken up. And on the 1st of October, as I said, history will be made. And going forward, I do not see any possibility of that to survive this very often. Because they're not going to survive nothing. Nothing ever is going to make us Not even death that until everybody is dead. And it is my sincere prayers, it is my sincere wish that people can now understand where we are coming from and embrace this very effort to set every capital. Thank you very much, Amazi Inamdekano, the leader of the IPOB. I'm so honored, but before we go ahead, we, we need to do the national anthem of the Biafra nation. Because Biafra is a nation, it's, it's not one of those contraptions. No, it's, it is not. It's a nation and it's going to remain a nation. And nobody can stop it because it has come to stay. And nobody can change that. Nobody can do anything about it apart from to embrace it. And I want to thank everyone that facilitates this to happen. It's my pleasure to introduce the national anthem of the Biafra Nation! triumphant from all our foes through the crucible unscathed we passed victorious our trumpets pealing the glorious song play it sing it Shall always remember 
Wow, that was that one there. We're gonna go to the audit work people. Is willing to write off of the 85% of the Persian debt, but. Mr. Timitope is back with us now. We lost him earlier on. So let's have him uh, welcome our dear brother, Mazen Namdekanu, to the house. Mr. Timitope, over to you, sir. Um, it's, um, it's a great pleasure, I must say, uh, you know, seeing uh, the one lion among the thousand and one, you know, animal in the zoo kingdom. Uh, it's a great pleasure to see a man of courage. It's a great pleasure to see a man um, who has foresight. It's a great pleasure to sit on the same panel with a man who has, you know, great um, focus for the people, for his people. And I, I must say, uh, I mean, today is a day I would mark somewhere in the history of my life. It's a pleasure meeting you, uh, Mazin Amdekano. And it's a, I mean, it's going to be a great uh, time out here. Okay, it's going to be a much. great time. Thank you very, very much. Very kind. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, my people, wherever you're watching us from, please share this broadcast. Let it go viral. Even if we don't share, Unam the Kanu is there. His presence alone we share the broadcast. Thank you very much. First of all, Unam the Kanu, my first question to you: Why did you think? What motivates you to start the struggle? My total disdain and dislike for servitude, injustice, and repression of the earth. That was why they went to this. Not something I would say that I went into consciously. It was a, should I say, a subconscious encounter. I felt that the time was right for us to try to make things right for us. It is that today, it's been a very long time coming. I recall most of my Yoruba brethren in London in those days, before 1999, before the return of democracy, we had ideas as to how to put things forward. That fell through as a result of the lies and the duplicity of the politicians. But here we are today, as ordained by God Almighty of Heaven, that we should be living this very hard that everybody did. I protest the justice. I hate backwardness. I do not like to see people suffer. Had I chosen to perhaps um, um, institute a scholarship in my village, I may have been able to help, say, five or six people. But where would I get them? Everybody is suffering, families are suffering, people are dying, children are being born prematurely, there is no health care, no good roads, nothing seems to be functioning. 
The only way to address that type of problem is to approach it from a holistic perspective, to prefer solutions and we see to correct every ill in the society. And the best way to do that in the context of Nigeria is to try to set the people free. That's exactly what we are doing and we are supposed to do until every inch, every blade, every meter of that very land is set. Okay, thank you very much for that. Wonderful. Maybe I should throw in one more question before I open the floor for my brothers. Uh, another question I would like personally to ask you is, since you started, have you ever have any regret? Uh, sometimes it can be very, very tedious and very, very tasking and demanding. I will be very honest with you. There are some times where I've gone to bed and I'm thinking, you know, what have I let myself into? <laughs> but my singular motivation is the ultimate goal, which is freedom. The greatest love you can have in your life is not the love you have for your children or your wife or your family, not even for your village or your immediate community, but the love you have for your neighbor. And that is what propels us forward. The love that I have for the earth, the love that I have for freedom, the passion that drives me every blessed day is to know that we are doing something that even God is himself in heaven or death. Therefore, I have never, in the generality of things, had any regret whatsoever. I will continue to do And I have been on record many times, having said that I will sacrifice anything, sacrifice everything to ensure. That the Afro land is different. And within that context, I have no regret whatsoever. And it's been very arduous, very difficult, sometimes very tortuous. But I know that in the end, it's because we don't <coughs> ever try to call the police. Thank you very much for that. So, the next question we go to Mr. Temitokwe. Mr. Temitokwe, the floor is open to you, to your model. This man you said to me privately. You admire him day and night every time you see him. So it is my pleasure to say you are free to ask him any question that you might want to ask him. Go ahead, Mr. Timitabwe. Yes, um, Mazi, um, like I said before, it's a honor to, you know, ask you very pertinent questions as regards, um, you know, the struggle and, um, you know, the plight of your people, the Biafra people. Um, they are brothers, we love them, you know, and um, we know that for someone of your caliber to be in the forefront of trying to ensure that, uh, you know, your people get emancipated from uh, not just the political shenanigans going on in, you know, in Nigeria, also um, you, you see a brighter future for your people. Uh, so my question is this, so far, I mean, what are your diplomatic, um, you know, efforts as regards, uh, you know, actualizing, you know, Biafra? Thank you. Um, thank you very much for that, Andrew. Thank you. In terms of the efforts we are making, it is very consistent and it has been yielding very tremendous results. Um, you don't have to go very far to understand, or should I say, to glean from the enemy, which happens to be those occupying Asarok, as to the depth or to the extent to which what are we are doing diplomatically has been able to affect them or affect their thinking or their policy insofar as the sustenance of Nigeria is concerned. I am not at personal liberty for reasons which I am sure you would appreciate to divulge every detail of every meeting that I've ever had. But I'm sure that you're aware that um, sometime last year, I was in Geneva, and after that, I traveled to Washington. We have been doing a lot of work, not just myself, but the entire team as well. And I am glad to say that that very effort we have continued to make is now bearing fruit. You're also aware of the fact that Garba Sheikh only a few days ago wrote what in his view was a counter 
to the letter from the British parliamentarians to the Secretary General of the Commonwealth. And in that very letter, he alluded to the fact that the work that IPOB is doing is casting Nigeria in a bad light, which is actually an anomaly because what we are doing is trying to portray Nigeria the way it is and using our diplomatic channels to notify the world as to the hopelessness of that very Lugardian contraption. That is all that we have done, and that is what we'll continue to do. So you have to forgive me if I will not go as far as being able to give you some names. But we have been in those meetings and those, should I say, consultations are still ongoing up until this very day. We know that the coming of coronavirus may have slowed things down a little bit. We also know that the focus of America right now is on their elections coming up, um, you say roughly two months time. And I am very, very confident that in no distant time, the world will rise up and take note of what we have been telling them. But it is, um, it gladdens my heart, so to speak, that People who were before a bit reticent, people who always sided with the Fulani Janjaweed, people that always propped up the decaying fabric of Fulani Janjaweedism in the zoo have now realized that things can no longer go on the way it's been going on for years. They have spoken. And once British parliamentarians rose to say something about Nigeria, that should then tell you the extent that the work we have done has permeated the subconscious, of, should I say, of those people who in the past would have stood up to try and defend Nigeria. The way Nigeria right, is right now is indefensible. The killing of innocent Christians in the Middle Belt, the raping and pillaging destruction of hand is going on in the South, both in Biafra and also in Dudua. As you well know, the death of the daughter of uh, Pafasho Ranti, the family for a leader, Pasha and many other unspeakable yes. and heinous crimes going on across Nigeria. In fact, it makes our work a lot more easier because when we go into these meetings, all we need to do is to say to them, have you heard about this and that and the other? And they come out and they say, yes, we've heard about it. And then we say to them, what are you then going to do about it? And that is what they're actually um, on the verge of doing right now. And I know that Corona actually did put a bit of a um, damp on a few things, but I'm quite sure that the early part of 2021, the world witnessed a new attitude towards the very nepotistic and very horrible, horrible terrorist regime you have in Nigeria. Right. I appreciate that. There's, there's another question I would also like to ask you. Um, you know, vis-a-vis -vis your um, recognition with the United Nations, I mean, I'm talking about, uh, do you have any kind of presence with, you know, the United Nations, maybe registering, like, you know, the UNPO and all that? I just want to know if you have anything in that regards. The fact of the matter is that we do have a lot of consultants working for us. It's a very expensive undertaking, but that is the truth. And we have them working for us across the entire continents of the world. And it requires a lot of resources, uh, both financial and otherwise. It takes a lot of dedication. And the thing about it is that you know that in the case of Biafra, it was as if we're starting from a disadvantage. Because for 50 years, the world was missing as to what Biafra was all about. It was a lot of problems to be peddled. As you well know, we lost over 5 million people during the genocidal war of 67 to 70, which was swept under the carpet in comparison to Rwanda, where they lost only 150,000 people. I'm not trying to in any way denigrate uh, the life of those in Uganda, those that perished in that very horrible, horrible genocide. What I'm trying to say, I, I'm trying to sway what happened in Rwanda as that obtained in Biafra. So we were starting from a highly disadvantageous position. The full earning war chest is nearly 30 billion US dollars. With it, they can bribe any That's diplomat. Right. 
with it, they can compare or control right. companies that they have considered our oil and gas right. to in Nigeria to lobby their own governments, but not minding any of those. In terms of United Nations coming out to categorically pronounce or make any utterances that may be deemed to be favorable towards Biafra is not something that we expect because Nigeria is a sovereign nation and a member of the United Nations as well. What they seem to be advising or what they seem to want to encourage is a form of restructuring perhaps back to 1960 constitution or 1963 constitution. And I have made it categorically clear that we are not going to have any of that because our starting point is very simple. It is a moral one. The construction of the bringing into existence of Nigeria is an act of racism. That is our starting point. Mm -hmm. We must be able to see the creation of states within Africa as a racist construct by European powers that felt that they were superior to black people. That is our starting point. Very now, true. the next question Very that I always true. ask when I go to meetings is this. Will you allow me as a black African to come to Europe and create countries for you or create nations for you? The answer I get all the time is yeah. no. Then why won't you allow the organic emergence of nations in Africa rather than this artificial colonial position? And once you try to drill down the problem to this, I'm sure they begin to appreciate it. But one thing you must understand is this. There is an element of, should I say, a supremacist mindset within the sometimes the UN. And that mindset is this. We are white people. We created your nations for you in Africa. Who are you to try to untangle what we have done? You are a black person. You are niggers. They will not do this exactly. But as you can see, their faces, that's what they are thinking. They tell you all these things and they say, oh, try and go and resolve your issues. And when you say to them, we have divergent value systems, the building, the very foundational block of any society is a commonality of value system, of tradition, of religion, of language, and perhaps of some kind of, um, should I say, social similarities. In Nigeria, you don't have it. I am more closely True. affiliated with a Westerner more than I am with a Fulani person. So once you keep drumming all these things down, after a while they tend to appreciate and to understand it. But anybody expecting the UN to rise up and make a categorical pronouncement on the division of a sovereign nation affiliated to them without, without any cause for it is grossly mistaken. And we are not depending on them or anybody else for that matter. To make such pronouncements they are waiting for us they are looking upon us to try and do something and that is what we have now started doing and i think the first of october will be very very difficult thank you okay let's go that's, to that's ola yomikoiki uh for another two questions before i come back to you ola yomikoiki the floor is open to you sir Uh, you know, one that I believe will go. Sorry, a long I think way. we lost your voice. Uh, we lost your audio at the beginning. Could you start again, please? All right, Mikuiki. I said, uh, first and foremost, I'd like to appreciate Heritage Television for bringing this together. Uh, and I'm sure uh, this is one area that a lot of people might never think would eventually come to happen today. Uh, and why do I say that? Uh, you know, so many, you know, people from the Yorubas always you know have a different you know opinion and view about the leader of the Biafra Mazi in Amdekano that I have opportunity you know to sit down right now in as much as we're using the technology but it looks like I'm a round table and having this kind of discussion. The first question I would like to ask is you know how do we build you know these kind of uh, I, I understand there's been history between you know the Yoruba and the you know the you know the Biafra, but where do you think? Because I've I've listened to you so many times. Since a lot of people might probably not get you right 
each time you go harder on the Yoruba saying, you know, you are part of those that are making Nigeria to work. So my question now is, where do you think, you know, looking at the, you know, the images and what you've been saying in the last couple of months of the Yoruba now saying they want the same thing, where do you think or how do you think the relationship from what you have been saying to where we are now moving forward? It's a very good thing. I think um, most people don't understand that I was even more harder on Igbo people and Izon people than I ever was on my Yoruba brethren. What propels us is the need to establish the truth. That's number one. We acknowledge our mistakes and we celebrate our successes. Again, there was a very good reason why we adopted that very approach because we wanted people to go into any self-determination quest with their eyes open to understand what they are going into. And I am very glad that today you have seen that we have woken up the Yorubaris. The Yorubaris have now stood up because we consistently preach the truth over the years. Not born out of hatred. My nieces and nephews are Yoruba. They come to my house and I stay with them. And I don't want to, don't want to perhaps uh, inundate people with historical facts. There have been some debates and discussions in the past about the close relationship between Odudua and Biafra, especially in a place called Igodomigoro, which is present day Edo State, which is a right. perfect example of the fusion of Yoruba, or should I say Odudua and Biafra together. I can categorically say to you, or should I say confidently say to you, that the rise and the greatness of the Bini Kingdom owes to the very fact that that is an actual manifestation of what can happen when Yoruba and, or should I say, Ujidwa and Jaffa were to come together. And that is a perfect example and it's been flourishing for hundreds upon hundreds of years. These are the things you must understand, that we predicate all we do on truth. And once you preach the truth consistently and without fear or favor, over a period of time, it is bound to sink in. And I'm very, very glad to say today that the spate of self-determination, you know, right across West Africa, owes it to the hard work and tenacity of Radio Biafra and of late that of IPOB. It is something that I am very, very happy about and something that I will be proud of for the rest of my life. We have no differences, we have no issues, we have no difficulties. I believe that Biafra and the Duduwa side by side will make Africa a better continent and a place for all black people to be. True. Uh, can I come the, back in? Uh, yeah, come back in, please. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much uh, for that. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll just quickly ask one more question, then I'll go back straight to the studio. Once again, we do appreciate those that are watching us from around the world. Uh, one question I'd like to ask is, you know, the struggle of the Biafra, a lot of people might say, is taking a very long time, and they might be looking at the Odudua and say, is it going to be the same line where the Biafra have been on this for a very long time? How soon do you think a Biafra nation will eventually come, you know, to reality? Because the journey has been a very long one, and the Odudua as well, that are already asking that it looks like we want a Yoruba nation, you know, to happen, a Odudua nation to happen tomorrow. But sometimes, you know, we are also, you know, looking at the Biafra being on uh, We're losing all our Yomikweki bit by bit there. But yeah, I, I think I can I can pick up I can make out um, uh, the tail end of his question. Okay, go ahead. Sir. What I have to say is this: no one can, with any degree of accuracy, predict the exact time that we are all going to be free. It is our hope and our intention that, given our level of dedication, consistency, and hard work. 
carrying Biafra and Oduduwa were to diligently pursue this very self-determination effort, not minding the few detractors that are now beginning to even emerge in Yoruba land, that sooner rather than later our freedom will be assured. But that depends on the level of hard work we are determined and prepared to put in. And that hard work must contain within it honesty, truthfulness, perseverance, and fearlessness. Very, very important. So that if you confront those we call affiliations, where we come from, the traitors and the servants within Oduduwa Nation, the same way that we have managed to contain some of them in Biafra land, then our freedom will be far more easily assured. But I want you to understand something, that there are a lot of countries right across the world with vested interest in seeing Nigeria continue. They too are not going to give up very easily. They too are going to fight very, very hard to ensure that Nigeria remains one because of what they gain from it, because of the deplorable levels of corruption, because of the high crimes taking place, because they can make as much money as possible from the corruption within Nigeria without anybody holding them accountable. These are the things we ought to be very conscious of all the time. But we have one thing in our favor. This is the very first time that we are coming together as people from the South, those who actually fought for the independence of Nigeria, starting from Habas Makkali, to the Nigeria, remember that? Who later on, the Yoruba man, handed over to Nambia Zikiwe. I don't know if people actually remember that part of history, that the Yoruba people and the Afghans, so to speak, have collaborated in the past, and it yielded a very good result. The collaboration of the Yoruba nation, or to an extent the Igbo nation, yielded the independence of Nigeria in 1960. Because without Herbert Macaulay actually picking Dr. Namdi Azikiwe to lead NCNC, I don't think that the history of Nigeria will be as it is today. What we are trying to say is this. People say it's taken a very long time. It's taken a very long time. They are not aware of how many years ANC had to fight. They are not aware of how many years the Congress had to fight in India. They are not aware of all the forces acting against the emancipation of the ordinary people. If when people are steeped in ignorance, it takes many years to educate them. Now imagine if we had gone to war, say two or three years ago, when the army came to my house and killed a lot of people, as a result of which I also lost my father and my mother. Imagine what would have happened mm. in 2017. But it had to take all the way to 2020, 2019, 2020, for the Odin One Nation to emerge, to see that thing that we have been seeing and lamenting about all these years. That tells you. And in a, in a short while, the Middle Belt will rise up as well. And when Biafra is lamenting and agitating for freedom. Oduduwa is doing the same thing. Middle Belt is doing the same thing. Now tell me which white diplomat will sit in their office in New York and say no to the yearnings and aspirations of the people. So nobody can put a time to it. Not even a pregnant woman. Sometimes you can say a woman can give birth within nine months, but you're not even sure. We are hoping and praying and working very hard to ensure that it comes as quickly as possible. And with this new pan collaboration, between the East and the West, between Biafra and the Duduwa Nation, I can assure you that freedom is far more closer than you think. Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate that submission from you. Freedom is around the corner. I want to say a very big thank you to all the people that work tirelessly to facilitate what we're doing today. It's the beginning of something big to come, and this is going to be happening from time to time. It's not one off. Is not one of I'm telling you now it is not gonna be one of we are going to work together uh, my leader said something that the IPOB right stop the Odudua right stop when the middle bed right stop as well who can stop it who will stop it no diploma in any part of the world we ever try to stop it Marcy thank you for the effort you put in in all the effort you put in, has anybody 
any animal, I will call them, that is from the East, member of the beer friend, point any accusing finger on you, because sometimes we have to call names. We don't want to abuse, but we want to call names. As anybody try to point accusing finger to you wrongly, that what you're doing is wrong. If you go through the newspapers every day on social media, where we are very active, you will come across a lot of dissenting voices, I call them, some out of ignorance. Because you remember there was a time when the media from the West never wanted to hear anything about Biafra. But it took them many, many years to realize that what we've been saying about Nigeria is actually correct. The same way for some of these misguided people. But there are those, do not forget this, there are those who will raise an objection for the sake of it. Even when Moses led the children of God out of Egypt, some people were grumbling at all the miracles, despite the fact that he led them out, despite the fact that the Egyptian army drowned in the Red Sea. Despite the fact that manna fell from heaven, they still grumbled. They not only rebelled against Moses, they rebelled against God himself in heaven by molding a golden calf to worship at the foot of Mount Sinai. When Moses went up to God, get the Ten Commandments. That is man for you. And no other group of people exemplify or typify this very trait of, of self-denigration than Biafran people. So it doesn't come to us as a surprise. It is absolutely normal and it is healthy for what we are doing because we are going to run a democracy. And in that democracy, there is bound to be opposition to government all the time. And we want people to walk their way through their differences rather than resorting to some unsavory means as a way to, should I say, um, um, resolve their disputes. Why I'm saying this is this. People are bound. You cannot convince everybody. We are 70 million all over the world. There are bound to be a few voices uh, who will say that they disagree because of what they're getting from Abuja, because their, their lover, their boyfriend is from Fulani. Or perhaps they have um, one reason or the other to believe that the continuation of one Nigeria will fail for them. People sometimes approach these issues from a very selfish, very parochial viewpoint. I read also about a very notable Yoruba elder saying today, earlier today, that he doesn't believe, you know, due to our freedom, that they fought for Nigeria. I was tempted to ask him, how about the Yoruba people in the Republic? How about the Yoruba in Togo? Are you telling me that Fulani man in Sokoto is more closer to you both culturally, religiously, and otherwise, than your own kith and king in the Republic. When I have the chance, I will ask him that very question. Sometimes people do things out of ignorance. When the white man came, the white man appointed in our area warrant chiefs. We didn't like them, but they endured up until this very day. So you must understand that we are black people, and we are black people are benefiting. It is very, very difficult for them to try to see the bigger picture, the well-being of everybody. I think it's, it's part of human nature. Anyway, but what I'm trying to say to you is that some people are bound to complain, but wait until the 1st of October. Then you will see how many people are in support. And I can tell you this, 99.99999% of our people are in favor of what we're doing. The very insignificant. 0 0.0000 to infinity one percent are insignificant they are hungry and they want to eat perhaps if they make a lot of noise that we can recognize them and give them some money that is human nature but we are not deterred we are moving forward and we are winning and as a rock knows we are winning let's go back to mr Temitokwe because we seems to have lost all i at the moment we will soon get him back, Mr. Temitope. Another opportunity for you to ask our leader, leader of the IPOB, a very quick question. I'll give you another chance to take two. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, it's a 
it's a great honor again always when I ask him questions um, I just want to know at this point you know with the way uh, things are you see lots of groups coming up they have they say oh I belong to that group I belong to this group um, on the one you know uh, agitation on the one ethnic agitation you have so many groups of course we know a lot of these groups are just out there because of uh, what they want to benefit they're just out there because they're spoilers they're just out there because uh, they won't get recognition um, I know when you started this course you you weren't really concerned about you know any of these things I mentioned because you were actually in the forefront of a struggle because of the plight of you now uh, my question is with the way you have you know different groups uh, you know the lower niger you know the mass sub uh, you know what is your synergy with um you know most of these groups and i know very much from what i've seen in you know so many protests you know abroad when the Igbo people comes out it's it's one it's one Igbo. but you know you hear most of the people down there in um, Nigeria, you'll say, oh, no, we don't, we don't like that man is a troublesome man. Oh, that man is a spoiler. That man is this. I mean, bottom line of it, do you have any kind of um, synergy with all these groups? So that, you know, uh, like my Yoruba people would say, they say when a man goes out in the morning to pee, it's only when you pee in one spot before you can get, you know, that, uh, for me kind of uh, response from your P to the earth so do you have any kind of uh, synergy as it were like um, you know you might belong to different groups and all that but when it comes to this goal of achieving the Biafra you are all one thank you very much you said do we have any synergy yes we do and the synergy is the restoration of Biafra we are all agree that we need to rest up the other. That is number one. And that's what we are pursuing. And what we are doing is no different from what has obtained elsewhere. All around the world. Anytime a people has the need to free themselves from oppression, there is always a lead movement. And then you have all the smaller nations. These people that you mentioned, can I ask you, to please tell me one remarkable thing they have been able to accomplish when we give an order our people obey it. When we ask for something to be done, that thing is done. Anybody who is stopping anybody from forming any group of association, a fight for the government, a fight for the that what we are saying and we continue to say that there is need for consistency. Once you have that consistency, then we can work with you and have anything to offer. But don't forget that I am the only individual the largest mass movement on the face of this earth. Now, are you asking us to have synergy with just four people? A movement of millions of people? You're asking a, a, a movement of such magnitude to find synergy with only four people? What I expect most commentators and like your good self to be asking is, ask them why you are only four in number, I mean four. One, two, three, four, only four people. It's of this platform alone, with one out constitution. They are asking you, IPOB is in over 160 countries addressed around the world. Are you telling me that there is something that you know or have that all these millions of people all over the world yes. do not have? So that is why we are welcoming and we're very good. Then we don't work with people who have compromised these very noble points. If you are in the payroll of the human government, the federal government, we will have nothing to do with you. Issue as many press statements as you like. It won't hold with us. If you are consistent, if you are diligent, if you're focused, as I have said repeatedly live on air on Radio Biafra, that this very group of people I see now agitating for Tuduwa, I trust them. I can work with them. 
And I know that regardless of what may have transpired in the past, that these people that I'm seeing right now, they are the real deal. And to them, Odudubala will be free. I said it in the open. I have never said that before. All these years, I've never heard it before saying that I trust a group of people from somewhere. I've never said that before. That this very Odudubala I see, I trust, and I'm prepared to work with Now, if I am prepared to work with Odudubala, Agitators, Yoruba brothers and sisters, why won't I work with my own flesh and blood? I work with them. The thing is that some people don't like the truth. And we speak it and we say it the way it is. We are always truthful and shall remain truthful. That is why this very movement that I lead is the largest on the face of this very planet. If we come out to march, the land cannot contain us. That's how big we are. Maybe on the 1st of October, in a few days' time, the world will get a test as to how big we are. Of course, COVID-19 restrictions are lot. Because I understand even in London itself, they have said it's only six people that can come out. Not even 60. The police today said only six can come out. And we are trying to see how we can work around that. Therefore, what I say to you, my dear brother, is this. We are open to people. But you must be principled. You must be disciplined. Morning, noon, and night. You don't waver. Any day they call you from Asa Rock and give you one SUV or give you some money and you start to live at peace with your oppressor, then you're finished. That's who we are. That's right. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, thank you for that uh, very tacit um, answer. I, I was, of course, expecting that. And, you know, I was only playing the devil's advocate. Um, because I wanted to challenge my Yoruba brothers, <laughs> my Yoruba, you know, uh, family in, you know, Nigeria across the world to say, you know, we need this um, strong bond. You know, uh, because I heard you say in the beginning that, oh, you know, uh, there are dissenting voices. We do not have any dissenting voices. As a matter of fact, we do not have any dissenting voices. Like you rightly said, these are personal non gratis as far as i'm concerned these are people who have lived their lives you know they probably have you know used up their children's destinies and they're trying to you know waylay and destroy others who are you know presently in a situation where they really want to come out from so they are very very they are not important so in you know with the dua people you know from the words of our leader Professor Banji Akitoye, we key under that fact that we are one, you know, it's normal even among 12 of Jesus, there was a Judas, there will always be Judases in situations. We don't care about the Judases, what we care about is the 11. Are they doing some work? Are they actually going with us in the, in the you know, in the dimension at which we're actually going? That is what matters. So I really, really thank you for that, you know, very, very great answer. I appreciate so much. Okay, so okay. we're gonna go back to Ola Yomi Kweki quickly, even though I don't know what happened to his image, but we're still gonna pick his voice. Ola Yomi Kweki, your question, please. Okay, all right, uh, I can see myself, but uh, I would love to come back in and come back out. But let me quickly uh, put the question uh, quickly. Uh, once again, we do appreciate, you know, not just uh, you know heritage, we also appreciate, you know, the leader of the. You know the Biafra, uh, you know Mazi Inamdekano. I have followed you uh, on Twitter, and I could see how active you are, you know, on Twitter, you know, in terms of getting the message across. But uh, the, the question I want to ask is, what is the power of the media, you know, in negotiating, you know, these new Biafra nation that you know, you know, that you've been on for a very long time. Because I could see that, uh, you know, the mainstream media, just as they, you know, the attack that those on the, you know, on Trump, as we can see right now, but you have used, you know, the little, you know, uh, you know, power of the media, you know, to penetrate, you know, the message across the world. What is the role of the media in getting exactly, you know, what we will eventually get, but as of now, what is the influence of the media you know, to, of, of today. Thank you very much. It's a very important question. Without media, you're sunk. Before we started this very movement, we studied why we failed between 67 and 70. 
And the key factor as to why Biafra collapsed was lack of media access. We had no media presence. The world was oblivious to what was happening to us. We suffered the second worst massacre in the history of humanity. Only second to the Jewish Holocaust in Europe. And nobody knew about it. Absolutely no one knew about it. Because of lack of media exposure to the message that our great late leader, Dim Jukwemekodim Ogojuk, was trying to pass to the world. We had to rely on BBC, not knowing that BBC was a mortal enemy of Biafra. But now we've learned our lessons. Because as they say, where I come from, if you don't say you're somewhere, nobody will put you that you're there. And we are now changing the narrative, as one of our people um, um, quite rightly has this program. What we are trying to do is to let the world understand and appreciate what we have been going through, what we are going through now, and what we are likely to go through in the future. And media is very, very key and pivotal, not just any media. You must speak the truth always, regardless of the consequences. You must be very, very diligent and resolute, always. And once you have those ingredients in place, there is no way that the message you're propagating will not come. The young man has a certain advantage because the young man has well established. And one thing that comes me this day is having been through all the articles and publications about. It's one very simple thing. The way they approach their, their coverage with so much humility and understanding, unlike their previous hostility towards the Africa. Because maybe now they realize that what IPOB has been doing, what we have been doing on our own, is correct after all. Now that their own people can see it. Now that the full are in your forest, now that your daughters are being raped and your mothers are doctored and cut into pieces, now that their culture oh have now God. used your cassava, no, your began, yes, and your and your every farm produce you have and stood. Now that Miyeti Allah is everywhere. Now if you understand the true intentions of the Fulani, that is why I concede to what my brother Tom Togo said earlier that those who oppose what we do, they are either benefiting from the system or they are blind. Because the Fulanese will not stop. They will never ever stop until they dip the Quran in the Atlantic Ocean. That is a historical fact. That is their mission and we need to stop them. We cannot stop them on our own. BBC cannot help you to stop them. Because BBC have been bribed by the Nigerian government. Nigeria has very strong loving terms abroad, I'm telling you. Very, very strong and resolute loving terms abroad. CNN will not cover it. Now, if they refuse to cover your news, are you also going to refuse to cover yourself? That is one good thing that social media has done for us. And I am glad to say, not minding what Facebook is now doing, Facebook in Nigeria, that is, not minding their duplicitous role in the suppression of truth in Nigeria, we have succeeded in permeating every nook and cranny of human reasoning and subconsciousness all over the world. Thanks to our very, it's not just me. My deputy is the for You have our DOS. You have, we have soldiers. We have warriors. Warriors. If you come to war against Biafra, IPOB on social media, you will never win. And these are people who are driven by self-conviction. People who understand the importance and meaning of freedom. Because for 5,000 years and more, we were three people. Until one useless white man and white woman came and said, you, 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 from today, your name is Nigeria. What Nigeria means, nobody knows. Nah, nah. So they are deeply motivated. Nah. And we are grateful to social media for that. And we'll continue to expand. So media is very, very key. Thank you. Okay, let me give it to Temito Pe one more time before I take a rescue back from you. Uh, I'm going to ask you for an indulgence. We're going to give about three or four people the opportunity to call in. 
because we want to make it as democratic as possible even though I will screen calls before I put it through the studio because we want people that want to ask questions you don't have to screen them let them come so we can educate them don't screen any calls I have them to come Okay, yes, no problem. So I give it to Tommy Tokwe one more time and Yomi Koike another time before I rescue it and open the line. And I must appreciate all the people that facilitate this. I want to say a very big thank you to Yoruba One Voice, who is the go in between the two of us who actually uh, facilitate this because without them, we can't even get hold of this big fish. Uh, we want to thank you again, Magazine Namdekano for your effort in saving humanity i'm gonna line some few person down to to ask one of our one of our own very very own the behavioral warrior that we have in house uh one of our own justin noir will be one that we ask question uh mogaji as well we ask a question i will put mogaji first then justin noir and then we will throw it open after that thank you very much over to you uh First to Olayomi Koiki first, and then we take it from there. Olayomi Koiki is all yours. Well, once again, I would like to appreciate uh, an evening that uh, I'm sure a lot of people will have to remember for a very long time. You know, 29th day of September 2020. And just as a, you know, as a media person myself, we always like to also put the time in there. It's exactly 18.40 p.m. right here in London where we are. You know, uh, you know, getting this kind of you know engagement that I'm sure is beam around the world, and you know, history will remember you know not just yourself but also you know the you know the dedicated followers. My question is, um, how have you been able to manage you know these you know this movement? Because I, I mean, I, I'm part of the movement myself with the Odudua, and it seems each time I wake up. I could see tones of messages, you know, people that are excited that we have actually started something, you know, some of them in their 80s, in their 70s, and they've always said, we can't go back because there's nothing called home. And you coming That's out right. with your bold face That's onto right. the screen, we can't understand how you've been able to do it. And I'm thinking, okay, if I'm being able to do it, you have done this continuously for over a decade. How have you been able to manage it? Um, is through the grace of God. I know it's a cliche, people say that all the time, but without the spiritual dimension, I'm not sure where we'll be where we are today. I am a highly spiritual person. This very work we are doing is divine. I did not wake up one day and decide to find for the people. I was compelled to do so. And before we embarked upon this very journey, I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I fasted. I went to Jerusalem and I prayed at the temple, the same temple that Jesus Christ used to pray in. And God said to me, in my own quiet little way, that when the time comes, I will give you all the people, all the instruments and all the energy you need to fight this very battle. And God has not failed to this very day. In fact, I can't explain it. If not for the grace of God, I don't think that will be where we are today. That is why we continue to speak the truth and to keep our hands very clean and to dedicate ourselves to the service of our people and nothing more. So that's all I can say about it. That is not, I don't think that all my years of working and of managing people in England actually prepared me for this because this is something entirely different um so i can only say this through this very special grace of the most high without god in heaven i don't think IPUB will be preeminent other people have come before us but we came and in a manner of speaking anything we touch turns into gold that is why we are preeminent right across the face of this very planet preeminent i can assure you and it's by the grace of god Okay, Olayomi Koiki is over to you, sir. Uh, I, I'm just gonna. I've been looking at some of the, uh, you know, the comment coming through as well, and I'll pick one, uh, you know, later on. Uh, you know, but most people are quite a bit of, uh, you know, there's a lot of excitement out there. 
you know, because I'm someone that follows, you know, what is happening on the social media network. And based on what I'm seeing there, there's a lot of energy out there. Uh, moving forward, you know, between, you know, these, you know, kind of, uh, you know, uh, collaboration, I'm talking about not just collaboration of, uh, you know, a, 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 a presentation like these on the, on the media, but also collaboration internally. I mean, I've had a lot of people, you know, that watch what we do, you know, from the Biafra and the same thing, vice versa, you know, and I, I, I mean, I know a lot of, you know, Yoruba that probably even dis disagree with you. We sneak through and listen to you, maybe or not on a live broadcast, <laughs> but maybe after you've ended your broadcast so that, you know, their name doesn't pop up. Because I know a lot of people that disagree <laughs> with what I am doing as well, and they can't watch it live. So they probably watch it after the broadcast have ended. But moving forward, you know, I mean, we've had, you know, you talk about, you know, you know, the leader of the Yoruba World Congress, Ruzaban Jakintoye. What is the way forward, you know, to see, you know, this kind of, you know, a kind of collaboration that can hand, you know, this location nine, also known as Nigeria, because Nigeria of today, like you said, is not just a fraud, it's also a crime against humanity. And I started, you know, my own agitation, you know, from a young boy in Akure, from, uh, from um, Akwaibom, that was matched to almost killed, you know, by the Fulani in Akure, and that said, enough is enough. It's time now that we end this before it becomes, you know, more of it. And it's still happening, you know, as of today, a lot of Christians have been killed and Muslims as well. What do you think would be the way forward as a kind of collaboration so that those international community will really take us serious that we are not joking and we are not just talking on the social media? I think that very process have actually commenced. Anybody who is a regular listener um, of my program will know that I have a lot of regard and respect for Professor Akintoya. I, I, I like him personally. The same regard and immense love that I have for Paya Debanjo and the same degree of compassion, respect and regard I have for Yoruba, one voice all across the world. And as I said, I, I, can't, I don't have any other way of putting it, is that these people I'm seeing now, this present class that is emerging from Europe and Latin to lead this very agitation, I have been waiting for them for very many decades. We have been waiting for them to come out. And now that they have come out, believe you me, you will see how things will turn around very quickly. We are working together. I'm not going to avail you of all the details of our discussions that we meet quite regularly. Off camera, of course, to strategize on ways to build, to deepen our relationship. And as I've always said to them, maybe in time to come, our children may decide that there is a lot in common between Biafra and Uduwa, that the two should be one country. All they need to do is to go and go to the referendum and they will manage and answer whatever name that they choose. For now, we are working together. And 1st of October is the beginning. First, it's just the beginning. And then after that, you will hear from us. And the whole world will know that that very south, that Lugard amalgamated with the north. When I mean the north, I'm talking about the feudal, full and Janjaweed Berlin states of the corner. Even at that, I, I, have, I do feel sorry for the Hausa people. And maybe who knows one day that you might also come on board because what concerns me concerns all of us. We just want to be free and to lead a terror free life. So we are working together. I cannot tell you the details, but I can tell you. Regularly, we meet regularly. With those, I can't even mention their names because if I mention their names tonight, I am sure the zoo will go to melt down. But I'm meeting with them and it's going very well. So far, so good. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Temi Sakwe, it's now your turn before we bring in oh, some yeah. few people that might want to ask questions. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ali Thomas. Uh, my question is um, in respect to the October 1 rally. And, uh, you know, yes. for the Oduduwa Nation under, under the auspices of, you know, the Yoruba World Congress and every other association under, the, you know, the Yoruba, the, you know, the Yoruba Nation, 
YOV and all that, OPU and all the rest. You know, we're most concerned about security. We know that, you know, we come from a place where the life of humans means nothing to the security agencies. If they can't get you the right, you know, the, the way they want, they cook up stories against you. That's their way. You know, what are you doing as regards, you know, your people trying to maintain? Because we have gone steps way, way ahead to checkmate whatever, you know, what plans the security agencies are trying to do because there are eyes watching all over Nigeria, watching them at this point. I must tell you with all, you know, sense of re responsibility that, you know, nobody will be shot. Nobody will be shot at. I mean, you know, peaceful is what the rally is for us. You know, very, you know, decorum-like is what the rally is for us. We should make, you know, we should make uh, the world see what we're agitating for responsibly and in a very decent way. Um, do you have anything as regards that in case, you know, you want people to support the agitation of the Odudua people? Uh, because um you know we don't want a situation where people go on the street yes people are very upset people are angry you know i do not blame them if they start you know throwing whatever but at this point we do not want anybody we don't want bloodshed we don't want anybody to be shot at i mean i know you command you know 99.9 .9 strong voice over the people of biafra do you have any agitations i mean do you have any plans as regards you know telling the people to be very decorum like and you know you know, following, you know, orders as regards this rally, 2020. We are going to be sitting at home on the 1st of October. We sit at home. Okay. But in the diaspora, okay. we join uh, brothers and sisters to, we're going to have joint rallies abroad. But in in the zoo, um, and the Afro land, we're going to sit at home. We're not coming out. Because we know the, how they operate. When the time comes for us to confront them, the world will know about it. That time hasn't come yet. But right now, I believe that the 60% of the work has been done. The world now understands how hopeless, how backward, how retarded. Not just Nigeria is, but those that claim to lead us. So what we are advising along the lines of what you've actually enumerated is that we want people to conduct themselves peacefully as we have always done. We rally all over the world. Has anyone heard of the police molesting or arresting us? The answer is no. Even in Nigeria itself, we have rallied in the past. It is the police and their provocative attitude. They want to provoke people because they want to kill. People don't understand the psyche of the Fulani. Fulani deploy terrorism when they cannot blow you up with a roadside bomb or get Boko Haram or ISIS to kill you. They use their army and their police to kill you. The whole thing is designed to terrorize. And the reason why they think they will succeed each time they do it is because they employ the same against the Hausa people, they were successful. They employed it against Ubagi people, they were successful. They employed it against Nupe people, they were successful. They came and took a sizable chunk of Yoruba land in the morning, they were successful. They even came to a gala, forced the Aga of the Gala to come back to Islam, they were successful. They went all the way to Jukun and did the same thing and they were successful. They have now taken over, actually they have taken over everywhere. And the instrument they use is coercion and force. Terrorism all the time. Not by some faceless groups, no, but by the army and the police. Ask them, have we ever confronted you before? The answer is no. I was in my house when they came to kill me. Did you see me going outside during my rallies, killing anyone or fighting anyone? The answer is no. They were, they were not happy about the number of people that want us to see me when I go to speak. And because of that, I think that is the way they are. You can't stop them. That is the thing where, where we come from. I mean, as somebody who is the God. Because there is death in what we are doing doesn't mean we are not going to agitate. We still agitate anyway, regardless. And I want to assure everybody 
We are going to be, we are going to conduct ourselves peacefully as we have always done. We may even see us outside in Nigeria, talk less of, you know, who to shoot. But our Yoruba brethren who are coming out, those who are coming out to rally, they will do so very peacefully. You have your media behind you. You have your people behind you, in the main, behind you. I don't think that um, some of New York Lagos State can come out and say, you know, those Yoruba people who are who are dating, go and shoot them. But in Biafra land, a governor will stand up and ask, even beg, if beg Duratai, please go and kill them. A governor will do that. Anytime, any day. So you people are miles ahead of us when it comes to that level of understanding that we are getting there very slowly. And I am sure, and I do hope and pray, that no lives will be lost on the 1st of October. Thank, uh, thank you. you very I appreciate much that. that. Thank we you very really much. appreciate that. Back to you. Uh, we really appreciate you, uh, Mazina Kano, the leader of the IPO, IPOB. Uh, I'm going to bring my first uh, caller in who is going to ask some question. But before I actually bring him in, I want to say something. If you're watching this show for the first time, please remember to share, share, share. The reason we're doing this is to bring a big force together between the Biafra and the Odidua people so that we can we can get to our promised land as soon as possible. I employ everybody in media, whether you're a media or you're, you're, you're not media person, please share, 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 and get it done. Uh, like I said, I and, promise And sign you, our petition. And sign the petition. No, Manze, we, we, we actually give a, 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 an order about that, yeah? The petition is not for Yoruba people, it's for the people of the Southern Nigeria been marginalized when they want to appoint people they appoint uh 98 percent of the northerner to a post and only give two percent to the southerner that's that's not how they do things please 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 uh jimo as uh akim yeah we can accommodate accommodate it it's not a problem let them try to do anything heritage television is registered and nobody can stop us from doing this broadcast. We're allowed to do political broadcast. We're allowed to do political broadcast. We're not inciting hatred. We're just preparing the world to prevent another Rwanda. Because if we don't do this, this is what is definitely coming. So I want to employ everybody. Please like the page, share the broadcast, and watch out for more present appearance from Mazi Nabdekano, who is the leader of the IPOB. So, my first caller, uh, please, caller, go ahead with your question. Caller? Hello? Yeah, go ahead, yeah. Maybe you want to introduce yourself, eh, sir. Hmm. Okay, I think we lost that caller. Did you also know what we're talking about? Uh, no, no, we lost. We lost the beginning of Hello? the of the thing. We lost. You can start now. We can hear you now. Go ahead, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> We have so many phones, so even if one is messing about, we we'll use another one. That's not a problem at all. Okay, let's try one more time and see what we can get into. So that one is not going through. I'm going to try and bring that gentleman back in. Why we bring in? Why we waiting for the gentleman to come back in? What do you think we can do? To get more Yoruba people, Odudua people, on board of this agitation, like you managed to get a lot of Biafra behind your agitation, Manze. There is visible and visionary leadership. You must be visible, and you must have vision. You must articulate the people, and also that very process be approachable all the time all the time those are the key ingredients consistency is the key 
consistency never waver. They will come, they will threaten you. If that doesn't work, they will come to bribe you. If that doesn't work, they will try to kill you. As long as you survive all these pitfalls and remain resident, then your people will begin to emerge and join the struggle. It's as simple as that. Discipline and application. I have my first caller. Uh, caller, your name, where you're calling from, and your quick question, please. Hello. Hello, Miss Ali. This is Jocelyn. Um, I want to say hi to Mr. Martin Africano. Good evening, sir. Yeah, I can hear you. Good evening. Yeah, um, I would like, because I've never been able to call in now uh, during one of your um, um, question and answer program, because the land is always busy. And um, um, it's been a great work you've been doing, and we appreciate everything you've been doing. If not for you, most of us would have been sleeping. Uh, you've really done a great job, sir. I give it to you. Kudos to you. I actually love you so much, you know. And uh, I pray that we get Biafra as quickly as possible because we all want to come back home and build the nation. Actually, I've got a couple of questions to ask you, um, if I'm allowed. Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Um, regarding, the inconsistent, regarding the consistent killings of the indigenous people in Nigeria, because it's really gotten out of hand. So uh, what I'm trying to ask is, would, would uh, the international community, would they ever step in without any kind of face-off? Uh, this is number one question, okay? And then the number two question I have is, um, one moment, please. Uh, number two question I have is, um, because I know the Nigerian government will never, you know, they will never call in for any kind of, um, any kind of uh, discussion to get uh, freedom for our people. If they don't do that and they decide to go with uh, Wazuri Kev, will you be able to work with him? That is my number two question. And then in um, the number three, which is a very crucial one, is the Fulanese and the Janja with them. I, I know when, the, if at all, there's going to be a breakout of war in the nation, and our people wants to come in, those in the diaspora wants to come in to assist us. And, um, and knowing fully well how these people operate, they might want to block everywhere all the entry ports. So how will our people be able to step in to come to assist uh, those back home? That is my, those are my three questions to you, sir. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, before Thank you very much. Thank before you. our leader hands that yeah. question, can uh, I say something uh, quickly, sir? Uh, of we course don't you want mean. people to ask question, uh, a, strategic, a strategic question, question that can truncate our effort. Uh, there are some questions we will not reveal our tactics out in the open here. So I will hand it over back to uh, the leader. Go ahead, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. On the first question, why is the international slightly reticent about, should I say, appointing a special envoy as will be campaigning for or try to take the issue of the killing of innocent indigenous people very seriously because indigenous people themselves have not done anything. Let me tell people one thing they don't understand. Hitler had the most fearsome army in Europe in late 1930s. He was killing everybody. He was deporting Jews. He was gassing them. He was killing them. Until they got to Poland. They got into Warsaw, the Warsaw Ghetto. And the Jews of Warsaw Ghetto held a meeting and said, if we don't, we are going to die anyway. If we don't fight back, we are going to die. If we hand ourselves over to them, they are going to kill us. At least let us try and fight. The Jews of the Warsaw Ghetto were the first people to fire in anger against this mighty war machine that is the Third Reich Army. And from there, other people summoned the courage to fight Hitler until Hitler was defeated. Hitler was sweeping through everywhere, killing everything in sight, conquering and pillaging, until they got into Warsaw, into Poland. And the poor, wretched Jews in the ghettos said to hell with all this nonsense. We must fight. Even if we are going to die, at least let us die on them. That was when Europe realized that Nazi army, they're actually humans, and they summon the courage to fight them. We need to do something. If they are in your village, you must drive them out. Until two people are fighting, nobody will come and ask you what is the problem. If it is only one person killing all the time, 
the person will be, oh, but please, what are you doing? What did they do to you? Until two people start to fight, nobody will ask you what is the problem. That question will never arise. And that is the question that we need the world to ask. So we are asking all indigenous populations to rise as one. Well. That is why this collaboration between Biafra and Middle is very important. And we are hoping and praying that the Middle will come on board. And once this happens, you will see that all the attacks will stop. If they know that an attack against the Middle West is an attack against the Duduwa and Biafra, they will stop. If they know if the attack to Duduwa, that Biafra and Middle West will come to their rescue, they will stop. They, that is the key. And coming to the second question to ask, we don't care. There is also a saying, um, I do I do apologize to, to our Yoruba brothers and sisters who are listening, and of course to some foreigners, or should I say white people, Europeans who may be participating in this program as well. That is the saying where we come from. I don't know how to explain that in English. I don't care how the effect comes about as long as it comes. If they like, let them go and pick uh, who is the worst flip we have in, in our area right now. That, that's quite a few of them. If you like, go and pick the worst if you have in Biafra land and negotiate Biafra for that person, I will support that very person. Once the end game is freedom, I will wholeheartedly support that very individual. And coming to your last question, once hostilities commence, which I'm sure they will do because these are Fulani people, all they understand is war and terrorism, there will always be corridors. People will always come in. After all, Eritrea fought Ethiopia. It is a landlocked country. Still, the people came in from Europe and from America to come and fight for independence, and they won. What I can assure is that people should remove fear from their eyes. Once we commence, we are going to win. Not just us. We did what we win, so also we will paragraph the Republic of the Middle Belt. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a uh, formidable leader. Thank you for everything you're doing for us. We really appreciate you. Uh, we don't want to keep you too long because I know your broadcast is always very powerful. Can I give you about three minutes or so to address us as you wish? And then we continue from there. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. I wish to advise everyone who is listening, every level of freedom, that we must remain very, very resolute and tenacious in pursuit of this very noble objective. Not just for Biafrans, as I said before, but for everybody who is oppressed within Nigeria. I'm sure that when we started, a lot of people misconstrued our message. A lot of people misunderstood where we are coming from. But I'm very, very glad and happy that today the scales have fallen off the eyes of some people that can now see that we Biafrans mean well for everybody. We have never conquered anybody before, we've never been to war before, never forced anybody to speak any dominant language in Biafra land because we are Democrats by instinct. Genetically speaking, we are Democrats. The very first democratic constitution in the history of humanity, of mankind, was written in our land. Therefore, we believe in equity and fairness. Sometimes our industriousness may be misconstrued as 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 um, um, as, as, as being aggressive, which is a clear case of misrepresentation. What we want is for the world of everybody. And rather than people complaining and crying about full and ganja with this everywhere. All we need to do is to stand up together to say you know is enough. On the first of October and we must always learn to ignore the issue of our needs. The Jews in our middle will come. These are black people that will receive money from Canada and try to turn the narrative upside down. You must remember the people who are very strong and very blessed. They will say common of things about you. They will have a passion. They will fabricate lies. There will be all manner of allegations. You must remain very strong. Those that live to this one of the most remain very, very strong. Mental toughness is the key. 
Once you're taught mentally, all this nonsense can never ever get to you. And that is my advice to everybody. Once you want to rise up to fight for your people, you are more than welcome to do so. But you must be made of the right pedigree. You must have all the ingredients together. You must be determined to carry it out to its logical conclusion. Not halfway they call you in Abuja and give you money and you capitulate. They've offered us everything and we said no to them. Nothing. Uh, freedom is priceless. It's immortality. Any generation that gets freedom for their people, they become immortalized. Till tomorrow morning, people talk about George Washington. Forever and ever, we talk about Nelson Mandela. That's how life is. Once you fight for your people, you become an immortal. That's the meaning of it. And money cannot buy that. There is nothing in this life that money can buy. Nothing. Nothing that it can buy because ultimately everybody dies. You don't go to the grave with your cars or your or your big mansions. The only thing you have with you is your name. And once your name remains on the face of this very earth, you are referenced and mentioned every blessed day as the class of people that got freedom for their people. What else are you looking for? Everything is complete. And you're going straight to heaven. That I can assure you. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> That was very powerful. That was very, very, very powerful. Well, I have another caller who wants to ask a question. Caller, go ahead, please. Good evening. Go ahead. Yeah, we're listening. Good evening. Yes, I want to. I want to. I want to greet uh, Matthew Nabitano. I also want to thank uh, Heritage Multimedia Commission for this uh, great uh, privilege and uh, this great broadcast. Um, my question goes like this. After this uh, on 1st of October rally, to ensure that the rally continues, um, is the Afro people in Nigeria, I mean the high poor people in Nigeria, are not going to join us, perhaps if this rally will not just end in October 1st, if it continues. Are they going to team up together since they haven't sit out of atom uh, order as a civil disobedient, like uh, they said? But when it's on second or, or third, if it continues, are they going to be with us? I just let me ask that question. Thank you. The simple answer is yes. Once you continue to be on the streets, of course, we will join you after October the 1st. Absolutely critical. Who will do so and i don't want people to underestimate the depth of cooperation and camaraderie that exists between biafra and the dudu watch at this point in time it is very very deep it is a bond that i can even go as far as saying is unbreakable but i'm not trying to jinx it but i can tell you that the bond is very very deep and it will continue once you stay down on the streets after the Lord have mercy. We will join you. Of course we will. Thank you. Fantastic. I, I, I'm probably going to try and get my uh, the first person that was trying to ask question earlier on, uh, which is one of our leaders. I'm going to try and get them back. And then thereafter, I will be giving it to Mr. Timitopoe to ask one more question and allow me to ask one more question. And we will be bidding bye-bye. Uh, oh, people have been asking me for numbers to call. I am so sorry. I haven't <laughs> actually pinned that number. Um, I'll pin the number now, guys. I'm so sorry that I haven't pinned the number before. I'm going to give the people on uh, YouTube more privilege today. So I'm going to pin the number first on YouTube. It's plus four four seven three four one two three four five six zero, And that is what's up, please. What's up? Uh, uh, plus four four seven three four one two three four five six zero and that is on whatsapp please don't jam the line try not to jam the line because if you jam it it's just not gonna work for every one of us thank you very much guys uh now i'm gonna be pinning that number to youtube as well or to facebook as well so that people can actually ask their question on facebook as well while we're waiting for that to 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 normalize uh, let me try and get the father that called earlier on back. Uh, people are calling already, so I'll give it to you, guy. So let's pick this gentleman first because he's the first one. He was there waiting straight away. 
Uh, I don't know what happens to him. Okay, let's forget about that one. Let's go back to this our father that I believe is watching with so much keen interest. Uh, it's been a big honor to have somebody like you in our midst. Sir, you were asking a question before we lost you earlier on. Go ahead, ask your question again, sir. Oh, you were saying something. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there's no question for my brother. Uh, Mazi and I are brothers. And he knows what I'm saying. We cannot give too much oh, away. Yes. I just want to say a big yes. thank you to my brother for honoring this call. And that um, on this journey, of course, we are together and God will bless all our efforts. I just want to wish him well and to wish the ego. Uh, the Afra and the Yoruba to do our nation all the best in our future endeavors and may God crown all our efforts with freedom on that there would never be a compromise the two are going to go together and actualize their dream of independent state and by that Ashe. 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 that is the resolve to which we are addressed and to the resolve that we shall accomplish and let it be said that on this particular day, history was made, and I am glad to have been part of it. Thank you so very much, and God bless you all. Fantastic. Thank you. So Thank you very much. much. It wasn't I a question. You said so your there's, Thank there's, you no, there's, no, there's no point in trying to answer a statement. It was just a statement to, to, to tell us how they work very hard. Let's pick this one from plus 727. Seven. Uh, Caller, your name, where you're calling from, and very, very quick question. Go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening to my uh, great leader. My name is Ikenga Uluago, and uh, I have a very special question for our leader. Uh, some of our pastors, especially in Biafra and Banda, become so xenophobic in nature. So I want to know what should we do to sort people, those who have made it possible, like they are doing everything humanly possible to make sure that the actualization of Biafra is impossible. So how should we treat such people? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. What we do is that we give such a person the IBOB treatment because by virtue of what they are doing, let us understand when somebody comes out to say, I am against IPOB, I'm against Biafra, or by extension, I'm against what Ududua agitators are doing. What that human being is saying is that they love the terrorism going on in Nigeria. What they are saying is that they love the unemployment going on in Nigeria. That's what they are right. saying is that right. they love the fact that four refineries can be shut down hmm. with the attending wow. loss of jobs and the refined wow petrol brought in from abroad at such huge exorbitant prices, a depletion of the nation's foreign reserves. What that person is saying is that the Fulani can come and rape and kill at will, that they are happy about it. What that person is saying is that the army and police of Fulani extraction can come into our land, kill innocent people and get away with it. What they are saying is that they are Fulani slaves. What they are saying is that they want us to continue to live in servitude and oppression. Such people, quite frankly speaking, doesn't deserve to live. But because we are peaceful people, if they have come to perpetuate our existence in the misery that is Nigeria, we shall also make our lives miserable. Thank you very much. Kola, go ahead. Your name and where you're calling from, sir. My leader, my able leader, Mazid Nandikano, good morning. I'm calling from Malaysia. Go ahead. Good evening from here. Yes, so, yes, so my name is uh, Ofod Meme. I came from, I'm, I'm from Imo State, if that or not. Uh, my question is this. I have been calling you uh, Friday in Parati to uh, because I had a uh, 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 yeah, that um, we will not leave uh, uh, zoo. But 
instead the invaders or the winners they will leave uh, for Igbos. Now my question is this: What is uh, uh, what is the preparation of John Nayangodo in case if the invaders or the Fulanese refuse to leave the zoo for Igbos or refuse to leave for Igbos? Is there any preparation? Did he, one would have up to one million people or five hundred thousand people to chase the invaders or the Fulanese out, as he said that we Igbos will not leave the zoo for the foreigners, and he said the foreigner will leave the zoo for Igbos. That is my first question. Then my second question is this: What are we going to do for all these pastors? that perpetrating because of the money, because of tithes, and the, you know, selling ourselves. Because now I notice that Tony, Tony Nadi NLC are the one sparring anywhere that IPOP members are having meetings in the East. They are the one. Tony Nadi is in the forefront with all the criminals that he's training to uh, pointing family meeting to uh, zoo, um, what do you call it, zoo security agents like uh, DSS and military or police. What can we do to make sure that all these people bring the to justice? Thanks so much. This is my question for now. Thank you. Can I say something before you answer, sir? I, I know it's a question for you, but what I'm saying is that people should not ask question that we truncate what we're doing we, whatever we want to do we can't keep discussing it in the, in the open air because it's not gonna help us please let us bear that in mind and ask question that will that make sense I, I, I'm not saying your question doesn't make sense but there are some few things we need to bear in mind that we need to ask question that will not give anything away to the idiots we're dealing with thank you is there anything you want to add to that or should I just Go to the next um, one. I think you've answered it. What I would like to add is that uh, when people make statements, then we hold them accountable. To them. So if anyone says that they can, they're not going anywhere, he said that the families will go. Then when the time comes, you ask them what they have done in relation to Uzo One and all the massacres that the media have carried out in the states. Um, you find out that it's still the same story. Nothing is happening, and nothing will happen. And more and more Fulani settlements in our forests are spreading up every blessed day. And come to the issue of us, are you people to their conscience? As I said, I feel we, we command the attention, loyalty, and devotion of 99.9% .9 of our people. When you're used to counting in billions, what is hundreds to you? So we always win. Thank you. The next caller, please go ahead. Yeah, your question, please. Make it very, very brief. Yeah. Yeah, yes, am I am I on now? You are on now, yeah. He can hear you, but you might not hear him. But I, I think you can hear him, yeah. Uh, okay, okay. My name is Paul Oni. I'm calling from Abe Okuta in Ogun State, Nigeria. Wow, brave man. Uh, yes, I. It is so. It's wonderful having you here, and uh, I, I I commiserate with you that uh, you lost your parents in this struggle. Uh, some of us have also lost one thing or the other over the years. So, uh, I, it's wonderful for a people that have identity, nationalities to, to go on their own. But my own worry, and the worry of some other schools of thought, is that just like the Catalonians, that they have struggled and struggled and struggled, how do you see us achieving this goal? That is one part of the question of the Oduduwa Republic, the Biafra, and the other nationalities in this country, especially those up north that are suffering, that they are being killed on a daily basis. How do you see us achieving it? If we do a rally on the first now, everybody goes back home, nobody can maintain it. Let's not deceive ourselves. Nobody can continuously do these rallies and be on the streets 24 hours every day. They will break out the military and everybody will go back home. Now, how do we eventually achieve this? The Yorubas have gone to the UN, uh, UN people. How do we go further? How do we achieve this? And when we have a, a country that is legitimately, you know, constituted as a nation, 
who has the power of the military, power of the forces behind them? That is one part of the question. The second part of the question is what is Daddy, can I can I stop you there, sir? Can I stop you? You can only ask one question from now on because of time. Hey, and please. the same question, but the second one is very important too. Okay, go ahead. go ahead. Go ahead. Very, very important. The second school of thought says that okay, when Jonathan was there, why didn't he put his own people all over the places too? These people have put their own place people all over the places. In 2023, if an Igbo man becomes president, or a Yoruba man becomes president, if they also put their own people all over the places, build the rail lines like they are building rail lines from Kano to Niger, we also link all our places and develop our places. Uh, how do you see that as an option? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, my dear brother, for calling. On your first question, how do you sustain this very effort is how we have sustained it over the years consistency it what gives you victory at the end of the day mandela was in jail for six seven years consistency eventually he won and we do concede of course that the likes of steve Biko died in the process because blood will be shed people will die that is the nature of the beast that we are facing but that shouldn't deter you. That was exactly what we did. That was why the white man came in and, should I say, Europeans and divided a great Yoruba nation into three. Some Yoruba people are in Togo, some are in the Republic, some are in Nigeria. And um, I ask you to go to England and tell me in how many countries you have English people? There are one country in England. In how many countries around the world do you have? Even Switzerland, that is a combination of France, of um, Italy, and of Germany, they all have the right to independence. I was in Geneva. I saw Geneva. Geneva has the right to become independent tomorrow morning from Switzerland if they want to. The canton system they have is a very loose form of um, of, um, of um, devolution. Now, let me tell you this. People in Africa will always put fear first before we do anything that's always fear. The enemy will come with fear. Listen to me very carefully, please. Britain was very mighty. The George Washington defeated them. America is the greatest country in the history of humanity. The longest running civilization since the man set foot on this very earth. But they went to Vietnam and they were humbled because the Vietnamese were fighting for their land. When you fight for your land, you don't get tired. The Afra was able to hold out against Britain and the rest of the world for three years with nothing because they were fighting for their land. People must understand this. What you are suggesting, what you are implying is that full and terrorism should continue unabated. What you are suggesting is that what the Dama is doing, what Mienti Allah is doing, raping and killing, it could be your daughter tomorrow. Let's say with Pajurantri's daughter. Tomorrow it could be your own daughter. How would you feel? That's right. So you're telling me that you're prepared to hand over your freedom to a bunch of Moroccan nomadic terrorists just Maruda. without a fight because you're afraid, because you don't know what might happen. Let me tell you something. You have heard about Arab Spring. You've heard of every revolution in the world. One thing that Biafra and the Dudu are going to accomplish now is to have the first genuine mass uprising in the history of Black Africa. If it means we have to stay on the street for a year, then so be it. Are there no Yoruba people in the army or police? Are they going to kill their own people? Are you telling me that Biafrans in the army and the police? fighting against a tidal wave of terrorism is going to kill their own people to protect Fulani interests. Anybody who is for one Nigeria is a Fulani apologist. If you believe in one Nigeria, that means you want me yet the to control your life. And it can never happen. Now, let me tell you what we're going to do. You are now about to see pressure sustained. It's called civil disobedience. Martin Luther King used it in America and it worked. We, we go to our libraries, we write pieces of this, we write projects of this, but the implementation is the problem. That is the issue with a black man. To implement that thing they have read is always a difficulty until we try and change the narrative. It's called civil disobedience. There are many ways you can disobey.
the government without breaking the law. And if you don't do it, the world will not understand how dire and critical your condition is. These are the things you must appreciate and understand. Coming to your next question, you are going, if you like, my dear brother, if you are the president and you appoint every European president in the world into your cabinet, Nepal will still not give you light 24 hours a day. The schools will still be very, very poor. Do you know why? Because of the institution upon which Nigeria rests. Nigeria is resting on corruption, ineptitude, and mediocrity. Even if Jesus were to come down from heaven, to be the president of Nigeria, things can never improve. That is the way the place is. And let me ask you a simple question. Did your grandfather or your ancestors create Nigeria? Who created Nigeria? The man that created Nigeria, created Nigeria to serve the interest of his country, not your interest. And you as a black man, you have come to sustain such falsehood. And that is why you cannot develop that is why you have no electricity. Very That's very why you have no good roads. That's why you have no housing. That is why if you graduate, there are no jobs. Because very we, as black people, we don't go back to the root of the problem. We always prefer cosmetic, uh, you know, um, um, outlook or should I say outcome. The fact of right. the matter is this: with this new alliance now in place, the zoo will crumble. And I hope that will be no election in 2023. You know, when I was calling for election boycott, people don't know the meaning of it. They don't know the meaning of civil disobedience. Imagine if we had boycotted elections in 2015 or 2019. Do you think, what, what do you think will happen? By now, that restructuring that some of you are calling for, they will be begging you to have it. Because nobody voted, and the world will be asking, why didn't they vote? They are angry. Only then can the world step in. This is just simple common sense. And I'm sure we can remain resolute enough to carry this thing to the is sweet conclusion, I would say. Thank you very much. Mr. Modrido, sorry, I have one word for Paul O'Neill. Can I just give him the word? I can hear you. Okay. Um, the, the guy, Mr. Alagbala, on this one, can you go ahead quickly? And I will be taking Maurice after that. Please call out because of time. My brother has been sitting there for a long time. Uh, the line is now closed. Uh, it will be back here very, very shortly. The two caller I have on the line now is the two caller we're going to take, and I'll bring it back to the studio. Mr. Alagbala, could you go ahead, please? Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, first, I want to greet, uh, the great leader Namdi Kano Mazi Nandi Kano. Thank you very much for honoring this. This is a history in making, as they say. Um, I only have one question, but before I ask that question, if I may say uh, and borrow from the word of this really OTT, who said, education makes people easy to lead but difficult to govern. Easy, uh, uh, easy to rule but impossible to enslave. You see, the level of education of our people is why we're getting some of the opposition we're getting. I don't want to mention name, but somebody was asking how, why. I don't think this is a platform for that. The question is, is Nigeria a defined creation? No. Then who created it? Anyway, I don't want to waste our time with that. My question is regard to amalgamation. We have just started this agitation in Yoruba land, and we are getting conflicting uh, reports about the amalgamation. Some are saying there's a clause that says uh, it lasted for 100 years. I read an article by Babangida that he was there, clearly he said, Lord Lugard amalgamation was only supposed to last for 100 years. Our leaders, our elders in Yoruba have not told us anything. We have not seen it. I know you have been in this struggle for a long time. I know you are a lawyer, a very respected, learned person. We are watching how you are taking meticulous decisions. So you must have known something. Can you shed more light with us now, the Yorubas, what you know about the amalgamation? We know who signed it when they signed it, is there a clause? 
And if there's anything in that amalgamation that can help our cause and our plea in the international community. Thank you very much, sir. Erite, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you. Thank you very much, my dear brother. First of all, let me make a correction. My deputy HMFO is a lawyer, not me. I'm not. I am a political economist. I am not a lawyer. But I did do some um, some um, laws as an elective, as an undergraduate. Now, coming to the amalgamation document, that very part of the document, that part of the document has been destroyed by the British. The only thing we have is the commentary on that very documentation written by the Luger himself. Luger and Luger is that very document. As a footnote, in his main, um, um, uh, uh, the thesis he wrote about amalgamation, the reason why he did it. Now, that document we've been looking for, we have not found it. But there was another written correspondence from Lugard to the Secretary of State for the Colonies, making reference to that very part of his recommendation that the zoo should last for only a hundred years. But we have never found it. The same way they have destroyed most documents relating to British atrocities during the Biafran War. The same way they have destroyed this very one because it is in the interest of some people in England to be able to get Nigeria. It's their creation. They are very happy. You know, when you train a child and that child is a graduate, are you not very proud of that child? The same way they are proud of Nigeria. So if you go to England, they will say the, the most populous black country in the world, we get them. They didn't get themselves. And anybody, if you don't have shame, anybody who has shame in life will say no to you. Because your ancestors never did. The British did. So that very part of the of the amalgamation document alluding to this 100 year span, year span, the same way it was in Kong, is not there anymore. It doesn't exist. If you go to look for it, you will find it's been destroyed. We have the piece of document alluding to it. But the original document itself doesn't exist. That doesn't, that does not in any way validate one Nigeria because my village did not sign. Ibeko did not sign for the amalgamation. We have the names of those who signed for it. We did not sign up to that rubbish. And mind you, when the United Company came with their charter, they vowed not to tamper with the way of life of the people or much. That was the original royal charter of the Royal Niger Company. Until they changed it. Mm -hmm. So Nigeria is wow. Thank you very much. Okay, the last caller now is a gentleman from Togo. Okay. Could you please maintain the uh, the level of noise behind you, please? Go ahead. Your question? Okay. Okay, yes, uh good evening. Go ahead. I have uh I have two questions for Mr uh Nadikano, please. Uh number number one question is this. Um, we are having a lot of influx of um, uh, Northerners down to South. They are coming in day in, day out. So my question is this. Wouldn't their, wouldn't their influx down to East affect a referendum if it's there to come? Wouldn't that, those steady influx of, influx of Northerners affect, the, affect any referendum should any come in the future? Then number two question, since we have lost confidence on Ohanese, is it not possible for the IPOB and other interest group to come up with a better APEC group that can represent us uh, better uh, in the foreign or Nigerian um, affairs? Uh, thank you, good evening. That's my two questions. Thank you. On your first question, it will not affect it because before any referendum or place visit is conducted, there must be parameters that will be agreed. And you cannot just bring somebody, a janja witch, to come in who hasn't lived in our land for five years, not on the voters' register, and then you want them to go and participate and vote. I know I've mentioned voters' register. And I know some influencers and baby supporters will start saying, oh, but you don't want people to go and register. When the time comes, 
before a referendum is conducted, of course, the register will be opened up and people are, will now be allowed to go and register. And if you have not been done as a land, I think that's the international standard. Up to five years, you are not allowed to vote. And I'm sure that our referendum will come sooner rather than later. So they cannot vote. Coming to Ohaneze, that is, Ohaneze as an institution is fine. It is the people inside it is making it look bad. So I do believe very strongly that, you know, when this present crop of very corrupt, compromised leaders are out, then we'll have the likes of um, our own version of Baya Leben Jahu be there and speaking the truth every present day, not minding whose ox is called. That is the type of men we need. Mbasilika Meiji is of this world. People stand up and speak the truth always. Not when you speak the truth, you get a call from Abuja and then you start messing yourself up the next day. No. And I'm sure it's going to happen. We will release that office in the next four months. Maximum is up. And a new breed will come in. And may God help them the mess up this time around. Thank you. Great. Thank you, our um, formidable leader. We really appreciate your effort. We thank you for what you've done today. It's been a lovely day, a great day in the history of mankind. Because this is the beginning of something good to come that will deliver us. A force that will truncate the effort of the zoo government that will give us what we're looking for i would like to sincerely and privately thank mazi Unambikano, who has been with us for the last two hours or so two and a half hours nearly uh, i want to say a very big thank you for coming today should we arrange another one for the future time or should we leave that one and arrange that one privately <laughs> um, hopefully it will be we'll have one close to the when the time the referendum will be held or referendum will be held yes. both in Biafra and Duduwala. I will be glad to come yes great thank you very much for that for that for that analysis guys I want to say a very big thank you for you even watching the program and I'm sorry we couldn't answer all the calls the calls I probably have about 638 missed calls already so I'm sorry guy your last word, Ola Yomikoiki. I'm from us say a good, uh, you know, thank you once again for making it out. And I'm sure, uh, like, uh, you know, heritage, Mr. Adetama says, you know, the future is brighter. And like I have already put a stand on it, we will not hold election in 2023. Amazing. Amazing. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't hear you, but of course, um, I would say as a part in short that um, it's a it's a very great uh, time again listening to your you know very good you know proposal for you know freedom for your people, and we we'll believe very well that by God's grace the Odudua Nation, the Biafra Nation, very soon will emerge. Thank you very much again. And it's a pleasure actually having you here. Thank you. Thank you. You're kind. Okay, it seems uh, he's muted his uh, mic. We can't hear him. We lost your voice. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, I'm sorry for that. Yes, About yes, the referendum, you can now, yes. The, the title of the referendum is Protecting the People of the Southern Nigeria from Fulani Genocide. And he says, are we going to wait around and see another Rwanda happening in the southern part of Nigeria? what will you advise or will you advise more people from the east to also sign this referendum as a way of pushing something uh the petition as a way of pushing it forward over to you your last word as well along with it so that we can let you go thank you very much what i would suggest is that we actually expand it to include the middle belt as well the christians of southern Kaduna that are suffering and these are house of people 
Uh, also, the Bachama people of, of Plateau State are also suffering. The Kiris are suffering. Everyone is suffering. And since we are genuine and sincere about our intention to free everybody, it is my humble suggestion and recommendation that this very petition be expanded to include those who inhabit that very treacherous terrain, or should I say, that very treacherous by the Fulani people, so that the Middle Belt should also be part of this very petition because they are they too are suffering and we want them to be free as well very very critical and that petition will be signed by all who would campaign and it will be signed by all anyone who doesn't sign it that means that you are giving us a way to full and Buddhism, and it's not a type of um condition that we would like to live under and by way of closing the remarks this very evening i want to thank heritage i want to thank the Yoruba One Voice all over the world, uh, the Yoruba World Congress, everybody who has made it possible for us today to interact in a way that a few years ago would have been deemed impossible. That goes to tell you that in life, or should I say in politics, nothing is impossible, everything is possible. Our goal is one, our mission is one, and that is freedom. Not just freedom for Giafra or for the world, but for every trapped nationality within the damnable zoological republic and that is the solemn place that we're making this evening that we will not stop until everybody is set free i thank you all once again for listening and for watching us from wherever you are around the world and until we meet here on this block elsewhere good evening from here nice well um, it was a very nice broadcast from every one of you guys i want to again Thank you, all the people that have taken their time. I know your time is very precious, and your data is very important as well, but the most important thing is your freedom. Your freedom is more important than anything else in the whole world. I want to thank everybody who has been listening. I want to th thank everybody who has been watching. I want to thank everybody who has supported this program. From everybody that tried to call in and couldn't get in, I'm so sorry that you couldn't get in, but it's just the way things run. The petition has been pinned underneath there. I will adjust the, I will amend the edits tomorrow so that we can move on and get it signed to the right figure. Uh, once again, the leader of the IPOB, Maxi Namde Kano, we thank you for coming. Guys, until you much. again, we come your way again. I remain loyal to this and committed to this struggle. And heritage television remain committed to free everybody that want freedom across the black african states of nigeria we are not we don't want to be part of it again and we will not be part of it again from everybody on this in the studio today and from me we want to say thank you very much and god bless you, god bless you. thank you okay. What a very good show. Uh, can you, can you?